but we have another jam-packed day in store for all of you. Um, wanted to give a shout out to my my friend too. Uh, over the weekend, my buddy did celebrate his week uh, his birthday, hit a milestone. So Hector behind me, um, if you see Hector around, make sure you just wish him a happy birthday. I believe he's in and out of here throughout the day. So um, we had a fun day yesterday, uh, jam packed with all kinds of exciting content and programs. Starting out with some trivia in Steubenville, heading over to Gallia to do ceramics. Um, tie dyes and caddis, um, tea parties in downtown Columbus or outside the lines, and then finishing out with some games at Heat. So that was a lot of fun. Today's going to be no different. Um, we're going to start it out with some advocacy um, and then history lessons from Gallia, by, back by popular demand, Disney trivia, and then some educational segments coming from uh, Columbus and Heat. So looking forward to that. Um, to start us out, we're going to head over to Steubenville, though. Um, we love self-advocacy at PALS. It's so important to us. Um, we have amazing committees and programs throughout the state, um, and we constantly try to involve ourselves in the community, whether it's blood drives and working at food pantries and food, um, food kitchens, um, hunger challenges. Uh, the eight, we, uh, behind me, we celebrated the uh, ADA 25th anniversary in the state of Ohio um, a couple years back. Every year we're a part of DD Awareness Day at the State House, um, putting up blessing boxes around town. So try to do whatever we can. And we have wonderful examples of that here today um, joining us, which we're very fortunate here on Pals TV to have been able to include a lot of our, our amazing community members. Um, and actually I listened in on a conference call this morning where they started out talking by, about a, um, a book that was leading by kindness. And I, I thought about the two ladies that are actually with us today because they lead by that example every single day. Um, so we have the community facilitator in Jefferson County, Cookie West, and, and one of our SSAs there, Tammy Kane, joining us today. Um, we have a wonderful leadership group over in our Steubenville program. Um, and Melissa, Lisa, and Robin, and a couple others really do a wonderful job there, always trying to make sure that they are advocating for themselves and everybody else. So can't wait to hear this segment today. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us and, and doing this today. Really looking forward to this segment. So first off, live from Stillville, we have Amanda. Hi, everyone. Like Aaron said, today we have Cookie and Tammy with us, and they're going to talk to us a little bit today. I've known them both for about 10 years and they are just wonderful ladies. So I look forward to hearing what they have to say. So if you guys have a question at some point, feel free to raise your hand. They'll answer it, you know, the best they can. And we'll talk to you soon. Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to them. Hey guys, you need to unmute Cookie. Oh, there you go. I'm unmuted. <laughs> we can talk. Hi folks. Um, my name is Tammy Kane, and I am the Human Rights Coordinator as well as an SSA here in um, Jefferson County. And um, I've been working here forever. And uh, so um, Kristen knows me real well. And um, I'm going to let Cookie introduce herself, and then we will start things going. My name is Cookie West, and I've been working for the county board for about 14 years. Um, in this new role as a community navigator, facilitator. <laughs> my, the, the title's been changed many times. And um, I've, as, as Amanda said, I've known her for forever as well, and Tammy, and we're excited to be here today. Me and Tammy are gonna kind of tag team this. Um, and um, I am kind of kind of let Tammy take the lead because uh, this is one area that Tammy is an expert at. Um, and uh, I think she's going to give you guys some good information and I'll plug in um, here and there. Tammy. Hi guys. Okay, so um, hopefully I'll get this attached, but I have a video on the Bill of Rights first and let's see if we can figure out how to do this. Oh, let me. Let me share my screen. Share screen. Okay. 
There we go. Do you guys see it? Yes. Awesome. Okay, I'm starting it. Was there audio with this, Tammy? Yeah, there is. I can hear, I can hear, you guys can't? No. Tammy, there should be a small set of buttons up in the top right that'll allow you to share the computer audio. Oh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> We're all becoming more savvy as we go along. <laughs> Let's see. I'm not seeing that. I want, my top right tells me. Let me share again. Uh, let me try this again. Sorry, guys. Then if we're unable to, then uh, maybe Amanda will send you the links and then everyone will have Absolutely. an opportunity to um, go and, and to watch the videos are very, they're probably like three minutes, five minutes. Right. So it's a short video, but with um, a lot of information that would be helpful and, and moving forward. Yeah, when I hit top right screen, it just says switch to library. There's no... All right. Um, well, if you talk a minute, and I, I will come help you. You're awesome. Okay, folks. Uh, one of the things, though, and I'm going to try to get me back up here. One of the one of the things that I know that I try to work on is the most important thing is making sure that you attend your ISP meetings. Does everybody attend their meetings? shake us some head nods i see some head nods because i've had some folks who just basically they they're like i don't want to attend but you're talking about what's happening in your life and you need to make sure that you have the input and here comes amanda to the rescue and it, and that's very true when you are um you know being a self-advocate that means that you are you speaking up for your life um, and so when you're in that, um, you know, when you're, when you're are dealing with self-advocacy, there's three things that I truly like to share with, you know, individuals. And that is knowing yourself, knowing the things that you like and you don't like, what's important to you and what works for you and what you want and how to get it. Developmental disabilities, an easy read guide. Okay, I think she's helped me fix me, so I'm going to stop <laughs> Alex, and we'll put this on and we'll restart. Amanda fixed it for me. She's awesome. Okay, here you guys go. Yeah. One, you have the right to be treated with respect. Two, you have the right to a clean, safe place to live. And you have the right to a place to be alone. Three, you have the right to have food that is good for you. Four, you have the right to go to a church, synagogue, or mosque if you want to. And you have the right not to go to one if you don't want to. Five, you have the right to go to a doctor or dentist when you need to. Six, you have the right to get other health care services like speech therapy or physical therapy if you want to. And you have the right to get mental health services if you want to talk about your feelings. Seven, you have the right to get these services in a way that makes you feel comfortable. Eight, 
You have the right to be alone sometimes. And you have the right to keep some things private if you want to. Nine, you have the right to talk to other people. Ten, you have the right to have your own things. And you have the right to use your things. Eleven, you have the right to have men and women as friends. Twelve, you have the right to do things that help you reach your goals. Thirteen, you have the right to work and make money. Fourteen, you have the right to be treated fairly. Fifteen, you have the right to live without bullying or abuse. Sixteen, you have the right to do things you enjoy. Seventeen, you have the right to help make decisions that affect your life. Eighteen, you have the right to choose someone to help you make decisions. Nineteen, you have the right to earn money and pay your bills. You have the right to save your money and to spend your money. And you have the right to choose someone to help you with your money. Twenty, you have the right to say who can see your information about you and your disability. Twenty-one, you have the right to ask for changes when you don't like something. And you have the right to ask for changes without being afraid of getting into trouble. Twenty-two. You have the right to refuse to take medicine if you don't think you need it. You have the right to be in control of your own body. You have the right not to be held down if you are not hurting yourself or someone else. Twenty-three. You have the right to vote and to learn about laws. Twenty-four, you have the right to decide if you want to take part in a study or an experiment if someone asks you to. You have the right to say no to taking part in a study or experiment. You just watched Bill of Rights for People with Developmental Disabilities, an easy read guide. What would you like to do now? Oh, we're actually going to talk about it. <laughs> So Alex, do you want to finish what you were saying that we really interrupted you? No, I just was kind of didn't want to have, you know, time, but I just want, that's one thing that I'd like to emphasize is just knowing yourself, understanding your strengths, your, your weaknesses, things that you're good at, things that you're not good at, um, things that you enjoy, um, things that make you uneasy, um, things that you want to do um, and know um, how to, to get those things. And that's sometimes you have to do a little, put a little bit of uh, research into those things um, and how to, to get those things as well. Um, sometimes those are things that you can access yourself. Um, but the, the, the biggest and the most, I feel the most important part is just being able to um, know how to get those things, whether that's getting them those things yourself or asking someone that you think may know how to get those things, but don't go without, um, as they say, living your best life um, because you, 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 you don't ask um, how to get those things. And so really just know yourself, know what you want and know how to get what you want. That's awesome. Miss Tammy. <laughs> well, we have another video I wanted to show you. Um, and then we're going to have some discussion after this video. Okay, Let's see if I can do it again.
She'll need Amanda to come up and help. Go, me Tammy. Let's go, Tammy. You can do it. <laughs> Share screen. Here we go. Can you hear it? Yes. My name is Don Gunnison, and I am a self advocate. Self advocate is a person that can fully go after what they need and have the resources to be able to do that. I am a self-advocate and I speak up for myself. I'm definitely involved in decisions on what happens in my life. People are finally listening to me after a long time. People are finally understanding that I have a hidden disability. And so I think some of them are getting it now, even though it's taken them a long time. The group is called People First because the person comes first and the disability comes way down the line. People need to learn about people who have disabilities. People First, we help each other, we grow with each other, we encourage each other, and we laugh with each other. That helps me is being in community and socialize. Yeah, I like being in community. I like to be seen. I like having friends that understand me. I like everybody here. They're my good friends. <laughs> well, I'm achieved um, not being able to be bullied by people and by being able not to rise above self-doubt. I spoke at graduation and people told me that I was great. I, I go out community, do more things, um, help out people out. Be able to live in my own apartment by myself. I have a great job. We are incredibly independent, and through the arts trainings, we become more independent. The art has helped me achieve some confidence. Yes. The ARC has helped me by um, being there when I need help. It's important to learn and to grow and to try something new and to try to make other friends and not just friends, just get to know people. It's important for us to advocate for ourselves because we have a better chance of reaching our goals. Do you want to connect with other self-advocates? Do you like to have fun? Join us, achieve with us. That was a good video. Okay, guys. Do you have any questions? But we're, we have some questions for you as well. Um, I'm trying to get it. Sorry, trying to get out of there. Um, any questions? Tammy, I have a question. I know for a lot of our folks when I'm when we're having their yearly meetings, you know, it can be a little intimidating and I know a lot of times they'll sit there and they won't have much opinion. How important is it for them to speak up about, you know, what they want, you know, what they want to do? Well, it's, it's probably the most important meeting they, sh they will have to, have to attend in their lives every year because we are making plans for you. And if we don't have your input, then we are just guessing. Um, you know, again, um, there's some folks I see on screen. There, there's Mike and Barb who I've known forever. You know, mm -hmm. if they don't come to their meetings, then we could say, well, I, I knew Barb way back when, and so she likes to do... Um, she likes to do underwater basket weaving, just teasing, but, um, <laughs> but she doesn't anymore. Maybe that was something she liked to do 20 years ago, but now she does it. And if she doesn't speak up, sorry, Barb, for using you, but um, I just saw you there. And um, but if, if, we, if the team is making decisions and you're not having input, 
then you're doing stuff that you don't want to do. And it's not going to be fun. It's not going to help you achieve the things that are important to you. So um, if you're afraid, because sometimes those meetings are huge, correct? Because you have your SSA, you have your program coordinator, you might have your boss from work, you might have your guardian, and even more people might be in your meetings. So if that's too much, then pick one person that you trust the most to talk to and say, this is what I want to do. And then hopes that we can help you build your self-confidence enough that you can do that in front of all those people. Because those people that are in the meetings, it might be scary, but they, they're there because they care about you. They're there they, because they want to see you succeed. Um, and it's a, it is, I mean, it's a, typically it's the safe place. I mean, like as you said, Tammy, all the individuals that are at the meeting are people that you are familiar with. Majority of them are. And that is a, it's a great opportunity to build that confidence um, that can, you know, transfer into other areas of, of your life. Um, and as Tammy said, that is a meeting where you are kind of putting the plan um, together for, you know, how you're going to, um, you know, live your, your life, um, whether it's where you're, you're living, the things that you want, things that you don't want, what's important to you and, and, and what's important for you. And so it's a great place to get practice. Um, and as Tammy said, if you can't write those, those concerns down, find someone, which more than likely is your SSA or someone who is in a natural, um, that naturally supports you, whether it's a parent or a caregiver, um, that can uh, kind of maybe begin the, the discussion. Um, and then you kind of can fill in those blanks, um, you know, as well. But it's, it is very important to practice self-advocacy. You know, when people are talking or you see people speaking with confidence, it's because they more than likely have had practice doing that. So do encourage you to definitely um, you know, know that that is a place where you can, um, you definitely would be a, a great opportunity to um, just become more involved um, in, in those discussions. So um, I know that Kristen was saying something. I'm trying to pull up what you said, sweetie. It popped up real quick. Um, did you say something? Can, can you un unlock Kristen? Or unmute her. Hi, I miss you guys. Hi, Kristen. <laughs> it's good to see you. Hi. Did you have a question? I, uh, I miss you guys. We miss oh. you as well. No, I just miss you guys so much. And so. Well, this is hard. I mean, this, this whole um, staying in and not having day programming or even some places not being able to work it's hard for all of us so um, that's one good thing that you have this community that you could connect with even if it's just seeing faces but um you know um part of self-advocacy is also being part of the community and doing what we need to do to stay safe and that's one of the things that you guys are doing and um you know the director of dodd wants to make sure that everybody's safe so i know it's kind of scary and lonely sometimes so Alex, do you want to start some of these questions and see if some folks want to answer? And, and if not, we'll help you out. So me and Tammy discussed, you know, what we, um, some scenarios that kind of give a, a modeling or an opportunity for also you guys to jump in um, and answer how you, how a person would um, handle a situation. So one of the, the discussion um, scenarios is you feel like one of your friends is upset with you, but you don't know why. What would you do? Yes. Yes, ma'am. I don't see your name, but can you? Hold on okay. one minute. Let me hit the unmute button. There you go. Okay, Caitlin. All right. All right. My name is Caitlin. Hi, and Caitlin. When the friend gets upset, I help them out. That's good. How would you go about helping them out? Um, just talk to them and tell them I'm, I'm, it's okay. I'm here for you. 
that's awesome. That's an awesome uh, way. And, and I, I think you hit the, the nail on the head. Tammy, what do you think? I think that's great. Um, and if you don't know how to help somebody, you can always find a support staff to say, hey, I think my friend's having some problems. Would you mind talking to them? That's another thing that you can do. Because um, it's important. It's important that everybody has their friends and support system. Does anybody else want to share on that question? I see that. Oh, okay. Now Ms. Barb. Now Barb. <laughs> Just a second, sweetie. She's kind of trying to unhook you. It's not letting me unmute Barb. I don't think she has audio turned on, unfortunately. Um, she may have to do it herself. If you may, like what you were doing to me, I had to um, push the button myself to unmute it. So her there you button. go. Yeah. Hey, Barb. <laughs> what, what I like is um. I can't wait till we all can get, I mean, get, I mean, go back out and get out and meet our friends again. When's that possible? That's a very good question, Barb. We don't know yet. I know that um, there are some rules and guidelines that all the day programming and work programs have to do before we can meet back. So I know that the administration is working on that but for me to say is do i have a timeline no we don't but it, it is something that they're working on um you know i see that one you have a mask on and that's one of the things that we want to make sure that people stay safe so that's probably going to be one of the things that we're going to be occurring is when you do come back to your new places you probably are going to have to wear masks but they have to make sure that you guys are spread out. Now again, for Barb and her brother who live in the same house, they don't have to worry about that. But for but if Barb and Michael wanted to to be doing something with me, we have to keep six feet distance. So we have to make sure we know what that looks like. Okay. And so it's 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 hard. Um, I know that you you hear on the news that people or things are opening up like gyms and things like that. But I think that we will probably be one of the last places that really open up because of the fact that we have some people that have health problems that we don't want to see them getting sick. So I, I, I think that's the biggest issue. But that was a great question, Barb. Yeah, really good. Good. Anyone else? I have another one. Oh, Michael. Michael. Oh, Kristen. Michael, did you want to say something? You have to unmute yourself. Yep. <laughs> I know it's in the rules. Okay, repeat that, Michael. You were on mute. Oh, so uh, sometimes, sometimes they send some people to, to us so it's what to do. Sometimes the boss don't listen to sometimes. Okay. All right. That's a very sometimes good question. Sometimes the boss will be sometimes, sometimes, sometimes stumbling. <laughs> Sometimes your boss is I can relate to that. Um, here's the thing, Michael, is you, you need to find time. If your boss isn't listening to you, then it might be a good idea to get a hold of your SSA and talk to them. The thing, you need to have a great relationship with your SSA. Um, well, sometimes, sometimes I think that sometimes, they, sometimes I just, I just angry with some of the bosses. I don't like that. That you get angry with the bosses? No, no, no. no. Sometimes I talk to SSA and then they, 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 oh, they, they, they talk to the boss and they, the boss is, oh, we never did talk to SSA and then they, they, they don't, I don't like them well. We have people back. Okay. Well, they backstab us. Well, that's, that's not good. But I think the biggest thing is, is that if, if you're having problems talking to your boss and they're not seeing what you're trying to say, is that really find somebody, and it should be your SSA, that can help talk things over and um, with you and your boss and try to find a solution to your problem. But sometimes, though, unfortunately, when we're working and we have bosses, there's, it's, it's, 
it's not always what we want. It has to be, you know, if they're telling you to do something to be safe or whatever. Um, and there's sometimes I have to tell you, my bosses have me doing stuff that I really don't want to be doing, but I have to do it because it's part of the job. Okay. But I think you need to find a trusting person and hopefully that's your SSA to talk about your problems. Tammy, if I could interject too, um, you guys also have a great resource in your ISC. Whoever your individual support coordinator at PALS is, you can always come talk to us as well, and we'll try to help you as much as we can. How can you trust you or not? How can you trust her? Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> you have, well, one thing, trust is earned, so you have to get to know each other, get to know your ISC, get your, get, you know, have a relationship. Um, you know, when I first started working with you two, you know, Mike and Barb, we didn't know each other, but we built trust, didn't we? Did we build trust after a while? You could say no. That's okay. Um, <laughs> say well, no. Say no, no. <laughs> but um, Barb thinks it's hilarious. Um, but, but that's the big thing is building trust and finding somebody that you that you can trust if it's not your ssa maybe it can be uh, a neighbor it can be your program coordinator it could be your brother your sister an aunt or uncle okay but try to find somebody that can help you or even if it's a friend who can help you um have that talk between you and your boss okay you good I think Kristen wants to say it. something. You'll think about it. That's good. Good. Positive. And be willing to op be open for both sides. Sometimes we can see things differently, but we can come to a, um, and sometimes you have to agree to disagree. <laughs> you know, so definitely, as Tammy said, find that person that is able to maybe be that mediator between. Um, you and that person because there may be some just miscommunication um, between the two parties, you and your boss or you and whomever. Kristen? Hi, um, when I go back to school, I heard they have to wear a mask on students and teachers when they come back. I think they're still working on that, Kristen. You will have to, the staff have to, um, I have to. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't have one on now because I'm in my cubicle, but if I go out and about, everybody has to wear a mask, okay? That's, that's just, um, again, we're new trying to make sure, yeah, new, new things. But we also want to make sure that we are protecting ourselves from each other because <laughs> I could have the virus <clears throat> and not know about it, okay? I sounded like it too. <laughs> and, I, and, I have a, and I have a cough. So that was a good timing to get that from. Yes, Sammy. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a there's we we're going into a new normal. You know, we're we're things that we maybe weren't doing before. We're going to be doing um, now, and you may not. You know, um, you know, I'm not um, like I don't necessarily like to wear the mask because you know I like to smile. <laughs> All the time, so I'm have to kind of give me a mask with just teeth. But um, you know, but it's not just about it's not just about me. It's about other people. As Tammy said, I may not be showing signs that I may have it, um, but I may connect with a person, um, and their their um, the way that their body makeup is. They. I may have it and, and then I give it to them because I wasn't, you know, com being compliant and wearing a mask. So we are going into a new normal. There's a lot of things that are going to be, and it's okay to voice that if you don't like to wearing a mask, um, but, you know, for the safety of all concerned, you know, we do want to comply with um, what, you know, our leaders are asking us to do. So I want to ask another question or you have a, Caitlin, you have a, you have something to say? I miss getting paid. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot of different um, hardships that have really, um, you know, affected people's lives. So hopefully, you know, 
it'll be soon that we're able to get back to working and making money. And um, you seem like you're, you're you're a person that has, you know, um, you know, kind of adjusted to this new way mm-hmm. of doing things for right now. And when I'm a mask, it costs my gu- cost my glasses off. You know what? They said if you add a uh, shaving cream, like you wipe your glasses with shaving cream, that it, it'll stop it from fogging up. I learned that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> maybe if you go to the dollar store and you can get that and then you can, you know, see if that works. But that's what my friend, she wears glasses and she, she said that um, someone told her that. So I'm going to ask another question and we'll see. Um, let's see. Okay, you're in the grocery store and a stranger asks if uh, they can use or borrow your cell phone to make a call because she forgot, they forgot theirs. What would you do? Caitlin? Tom, no. (laughs) Absolutely. I'm with that too. One, because um, you don't know the person and they could run off with your phone. Number two, uh, they with steal it. <laughs> they could steal it and with the virus. It would definitely be, you know, you would be passing along some uh, cooties. So I, I, I'm, I'm with you 100%. Tammy or anybody else, do you have any, any way that you would answer that? Or want to share any, any other? Barb. Got to hit on mute, sweetie. I love Barb. Barb, we can't hear you, sweetie. We you can't hear you, Barb. Your, you're going to have to ask your staff to unhook, to unmute. It, yeah, it won't let me unmute members. her. Yeah, it's probably telling, it's prompting. There you go, she's prompting. good. No, she's not. Oh, okay. Someone's going to need to. Oh, no, it says I can hear. Barb, we can hear you. No, I think that might be the other person. Oh. What well, I was going to ask okay. is um, the only reason why I can be with what she said because you got identity stuff. Your identity on the phones. Can you hear me now? Yes, we yes. can. That's a good answer, sweetie. <clears throat> Absolutely. Spot on, Barb. That's right. Because people want to be safe. Go, go ahead, Barb. What? Yeah. Did you have anything else, Barb? Well, like, like my brother said, one thing. It's hard to, um, when it comes to asking people stuff, but you are saying there is some people you can trust, but you have to know who it is. That's right, Barb. You're right. That's right. So we have about four minutes now. Um, were there any questions that anybody wanted to ask or anything um, in pertaining to self-advocacy? Um, that you wanted to to share or there's a question that you have that you could ask and we will see if we're able to answer caitlin they've opened this could the government open the stuff way too soon and people can get the covid 19. yeah that's and, some concern that people do have and this, this one day they would open the ball and then everybody was together and then uh, and then just the six feet apart. Well, you definitely have to, and, and, and that is definitely, I'm glad you, you brought that up because as, you know, a person who wants to advocate for themselves, you have to know yourself and know, okay, that, that situation may not be safe for me. Um, you know, and you have to just, you know, go about, you know, 
making sure that you're taking the um the, the the things that make sure you know what you need to do so that you can keep yourself yourself safe such as wearing the mask such as making sure you're washing your hands um, all of those different guidelines that are, have been given to, to to ensure your safety um, you just you know are you know be mindful of those things um, that you have to do for yourself you know to to keep safe because everybody's not going to necessarily um, you know, take those same measures to, to, to stay safe. And fix the sanitizer with you just in case if you need it. Cor correct. Right. So do the things that you need to do, take the measures that you need to take to remain safe and realize that other people may not be doing those, those same things. Um, so know yourself, know what you want and know how to get it. Yeah. So, Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks, everybody. I Any think other that, questions? We've got about great. two minutes. Two minutes. So the biggest thing I hope that you come out of this meeting is, is to find somebody that's important to you that can help you if you don't feel confident enough to speak up for yourself. And uh, when you hear your friends say they're not going to attend their meetings, you folks need to tell your friends how important it is to be part of your ISP meetings so, so that you can have a voice in what's happening with your planning. That's my biggest thing I want you to get out of this conversation today. Okay. Well, thank you ladies for talking with us today. You're welcome. You're welcome. Our pleasure. Okay. And then we got Aaron. He's going to finish up for us and it was very powerful. I can't thank you enough for coming on here and making sure that we all advocate for ourselves and just re reassuring us that those meetings are about us, right? And that is our opportunity to speak up and have that forum that you know your voice is going to be heard and we're listening. So thank you so much, Tammy and Cookie. That was terrific. Um, we're going to take another short break here on PALS TV. And then we'll come back and join you in about 15 minutes, live from Gallia County. So thanks again, ladies. Stay safe. Have a great day. Stay safe. Good seeing y'all.